All right, good, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining. Apologize for the uh, technical difficulties as we move between different uh, presentation um, technologies. Um, but what we wanted to do today is present to you Acumatica's uh, AP document recognition and advanced expense management. And hold on. We've got a lot of people on the call today. And Uday, if you could advance to the next screen. All right, yep. So here's the agenda. Um, Patricia would like to, to do a, a quick uh, welcome. I'm gonna take a quick poll and uh, then I'll do a quick introduction um, of what we're looking at and, uh, and uh, introduce our presenter. Um, then we'll have the demo of the AP document recognition, a demo of the advanced expense management, talk about the year end promotion that Acumatic is offering, and then uh, uh, provide some uh, questions and answers. And so with that, um, Patricia, I will yep. turn it over to you for welcoming comments. Thank you, Rick. And thanks everybody. Um, Uday, we can still see your, the we don't see the presentation mode. Yeah, I can't share it. I'm sorry. It's okay. Open by That's okay. Yep. So um, we're, we're, we've changed platforms and we tested it last night, but something has gone wrong. So anyways, but hopefully the content will still be there. So I really, really appreciate all of you joining. And I, I am sorry that some of you got the invite that I sent and didn't get the invite that was sent earlier. We figure out that for this kind of informational webinars, I need to send them just like a regular email instead of marketing. So lesson learned. Um, so what we want to do is uh, there's a series of new enhancements in Acumatica, new topics. And we want, before we get started, to take a poll and talk about what do you guys want going forward? So um, Ure, if you hit the poll button, then you can launch the poll. And we would appreciate if everybody can tell us, did you figure out? There you go. If you can tell us what kind of uh, webinars or what kind of information would be useful to you. Uh, we have three questions, so real quick. We're gonna give you some time to look at this information. Just click on those topics that are of interest to you and let us know. When, I'm gonna give another minute. And now let's go to the second question, Uday. Yeah, all the questions are on there. Oh yeah, you can go down. <laughs> yeah. So just, so we wanna know, we wanna do whatever you guys find the most useful, whether um, a webinar like this is useful or just creating short videos and sending them via email or, and if we do webinars, how often do you want them? Weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, quarterly? So if you can give us that feedback, we would really, really appreciate it. So now um, let's go Please. ahead and end the poll. All right. Thank There's you guys. Still, still some people voting. Okay. And polling. And if you want to show the results, that may be interested to everybody. Share results. So we have 76% on the which of the following topics are you most interested in generic well, inquiries dashboards generic. okay that's very clear All so right. we'll take this and then based on this and if you can go let's look down There's there. so you guys want webinars interesting and you want monthly perfect 
So that's what we're going to do from now on. I really, really appreciate this input. This is awesome. So now let's talk about what we are going to cover today. So um, Rick, I'm going to turn it back to you. And sure. you can talk about the two or three items we're going to cover today. And then, um, and then we'll go from there. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Patricia. Okay, so, so real quick, um, we're looking at two main topics here that uh, recent functionality that Acumatica has introduced. And first is AP document deck recognition, and that is taking advantage of um, some cool machine learning and artificial intelligence. And obviously the goal there is to help uh, reduce time, reduce costs. Um, it'll allow you to analyze um, PDF files to automatically create AP documents. And so it, it starts to learn from um, your behavior and your documents. Um, you can initiate this document recognition from uh, Outlook add-in, uh, from incoming email messages, or from the uh, user interface. Um, it includes about a thousand AP uh, pages, and then you can get additional document packs depending on your on your needs. Um, the advanced expense management. It's kind of a, an extension of um, uh, some folks already have expense management uh, with the advanced expense management. Uh, it incorporates bank feeds and um, it combines those bank feeds and expense management um, again to work together and save customers time. Uh, this new functionality connects to over 14,000 financial institutions. Um, and then you can connect your, your bank accounts, your savings checkings, credit card accounts. Uh, you can do this on a schedule or on demand um, and it'll pull that information and then it makes it easier to, um, to reconcile. Um, it also ties in employees can enter expense receipts, submit expense claims, get reimbursed for expenses, both on personal accounts or corporate credit cards. So you can kind of um, uh, divide that up as well. Uh, the automated expense receipt creation um, can also be used uh, with a mobile device too in 2020 R1 and newer. So um, the one other thing to note, the AP document recognition is only available in 2020 R2. The advanced expense management um, is uh, backwards compatible to 2020 R1 and above. So today, let me introduce uh, Uday Sony, our sales engineer as the presenter. Uday's going to go in and uh, provide the demo, and um, we've got uh, we've got an hour. I don't think we'll need that long, but um, we'll be able to have some time uh, for questions and answers at the end. And with that, Uday, I'm going to let you take it away. All right, thank you, Rick. And I'm going to close this uh, presentation, or actually minimize it. And can you let me know, confirm if you can see the Acumatica screen? And also, if I switch my tabs, you can see the mobile uh, app. Yep, you're good. OK, so today what I'm going to start with is uh, actually entering an expense receipt using Acumatica's new, newly added uh, OCR functionality, optical character recognition. And that is uh, one way of entering an expense receipt. And then I'm going to take you into AP automation. Uh, there are two ways you can do AP automation. One is the manual way, and one is via Outlook. And then lastly, uh, I'll talk about bank feeds. So I'm going to uh, get into my mobile application. And uh, get into my Acumatica app. And I'm going to go into expense receipts and I have a receipt in front of me that I'm going to uh, enter. So expense receipts. And then I'm going to hit on this plus right here. And I have scanned receipt over here. So Android and Apple and which version of Android you're on and which version of Apple you're on, these uh, screens, these options might differ. I am on an old tablet, uh, and that is why I see this. But uh, if you are on Apple, you might see uh, these options somewhere else. So just depending on what uh, 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 you know software you're using. So I'm going to hit on this scan receipt now. So create new is the way where you would traditionally do it by creating new, enter it manually, open your camera, take a picture. 
but with the new OCR, you can directly start entering an expense receipt by just you know taking a picture and allowing the OCR functionality to create that receipt for you. So I'm going to hit scan receipt. And I have this receipt in front of me right here. And I'm going to start, you know, take a picture. And it recognizes this picture. And I'm going to make it bigger. And, you know, just hit the tick at the bottom of here. And you see now it's doing the rec uh, recognition. So it's trying to read uh, the amount, the description, and the other things that it can. So I don't really have a good receipt, but what it did was it's telling me it read the amount. In my previous uh, test, it also read the description uh, as Tom Thumb. It read the amount and it also read the date, but right now it did not. So I can just hit uh, check and you know that gets in the amount right here. But if it would have read the description, it would get the description and the date as well. But now I can just, you know, get type in the description. My bad. Tom Thumb. And I can just hit check. And now it's creating that expense receipt for me. So it created that Tom Thumb expense receipt. And again, if I had a much clearer, uh, you know, receipt on hand, it would recognize the description, the date as well. So going back into Acumatica now, I can log in and look at that, uh, look at that receipt. And going into expense receipts. And here is that Tom Thumb receipt that I just entered. And under files, you will also see that uh, image that I scanned, which actually helped us do the optical character recognition. So this was one of the features that Acumatica added recently, and it really makes uh, entering expense receipts uh, much easier. And it is powered by machine learning. So as in when you, you start capturing more and more of these receipts, it starts learning about your receipts and will start capturing description dates and more fields uh, appropriately. Then the next thing uh, on today's agenda is uh, AP automation. Acumatica again has uh, leveraged machine learning and has uh, uh, gotten in a new uh, functionality called AP automation. So if you have a bill you know, on hand, uh, it's a PDF file and you have it, you can get that bill in right here, incoming documents. I can hit new and I can drag and drop that bill here. So I'm gonna drag and drop that bill. I have a bill right here and let's look at it. I'm gonna open that PDF and here's that bill in PDF format, but I'm gonna drag it and drop it now right here. And it brought that file in here and it recognizes it right here. So you can see it's pending recognition. So the next thing I need to do is recognize. So at first it will take about a minute or so to actually do the recognition. And as in when, as in how you process more and more of these bills, it becomes faster. In my testing, I've seen it gone, gone to four seconds where it has you know, uh, done the recognition in, in as uh, short as four, four seconds. But what it's trying to do is it's, it's trying to find the vendor from this document, find the vendor location, get in the terms, uh, get in the dates, vendor reference, any description if it recognizes and fill that uh, for us. So we don't have to manually enter uh, a bid. So let's just give it a few more seconds and see what it does. This morning when I tried it, it took me around 55 seconds. And again, you know, the more you process, the system uh, learns and adapts. And because it's leveraging machine learning, it is going to get faster uh, as you do it. So it took about a minute to recognize this, but it recognized, you know, it's a, it's a bill. You know, who is the vendor? Sweet Life, uh, the location. So I have a vendor card and here's the location that it brings up. My terms. So... I can scroll down and actually see my terms are net 30. So it brought those terms net 30. And then the date and the vendor reference, your vendor reference is right here, uh, 148554. But now it did not get the description. So what I can do is if I know what field the description is, 
say for suppose this notes workstation supplies my description, I can click on here and then just you know select this and it fills that for me. And then it also brings the line item details. So if you see, I have 27 inch uh, ultra HD monitor, it, it gets the description, but it's not recognizing because it's still new. So as in when you start processing more of these builds, it will recognize your inventory IDs as well. But what I can do now is I know this is my inventory ID. So I can just click on this and then you know do that for the next items as well. And uh, this way now I have my bill created. So I just have to do save and continue and it will create that AP bill for me. So this was the manual way or the way you would do it in Acumatica. If you have the Outlook add-in and you receive uh, an email from a vendor or a contact from the vendor with the bill, they will, uh, you know, you can scan, you can upload that bill directly from uh, the Outlook add-in. So I'm gonna go do that as well. So I'm gonna get my Outlook now on the screen. And what I have here is uh, a bill from, from myself. Uh, I am a contact for a vendor and here's the other bill. But when I, you know, now I can directly create a bill from Outlook. Uh, so all I have to do is go into my Acumatica add-in and it will ask me, hey, what do I want to do? I have to do create AP document. So it will start the recognition again. And now it is recognizing this document. So simultaneously, I'm going to go into Acumatica and go back into payables and incoming documents. And you will see it's already started doing something, but going into Outlook, you will see it's still doing it. And again, it's going to take a, a few seconds up to a minute to recognize this document. So right from within Outlook, you're actually going to create a bill in Acumatica. So once this is done, it will give us a green tick and we'll just wait for that. It recognized, uh, also the one thing that I want to bring up is it recognized the vendor is brand glue because this contact right here is uh, attached to this uh, vendor card uh, in Acumatica. So it says a document has been recognized. So I'm going to go back into Acumatica and look at this document. You know, it was billed for this month and it has been recognized. So it bought in everything, it bought the vendor, it bought the location and it bought everything again. And I can then go ahead and save and continue and it will create that bill for me. So that was the other way where you could actually create an AP bill. And then talking about uh, bank feeds. Uh, so Acumatica has uh, uh, allowed for uh, bank transactions to be uploaded into Acumatica directly. So you don't have to do the manual uh, import of your transactions. It uses uh, uh, a software developer called Plaid, P-L-A-I-D, and Plaid connects with around 14,000 institutions. So Acumatica has built a small customization that we will install if you decide to use bank feeds. And that customization connects with Blade. Blade will connect with your banking institutions and all of your passwords and usernames are encrypted. Nothing is stored in Blade or in Acumatica. So I'm gonna go into banking and show you how we connect uh, you know, your banking institutions uh, with Acumatica using bank feeds. So once we get that customization in or that package in, you see bank feeds right here and then I can go ahead and click. So I, as you can see, I have one uh, account hooked up, uh, Chase. So I'll start creating a new one just because I wanna show you how easy it is to do. So I'll hit on plus and create a new bank fee. Let's see when this opens up. All right, so I'm just gonna uh, show you how easy it is. So I'm gonna uh, get in Bank of America. So I'm gonna say BOA and give it uh, John Smith and actually BOA was there. So I get in that information and then put in my email, put in my environment in this, it's sandbox in your case, it would be production. And then I just hit link account. So now it basically uses Blade's interface to connect with your bank. So if I hit agree, 
here is the list of banks. And this is what I wanted to basically show you that you can uh, select your bank from here or either search for the bank if you don't see it in this list. But here are those 14,000 institutions that you should find in here. So I'm gonna go back and go back into the one that I have, uh, Chase. So when I uh, hooked up Chase, uh, you know, when I linked my account, it got a link token and here's my access token that I cannot see. Again, everything is uh, encrypted. And then uh, I selected, it allows you to select the accounts that you want to link up to Acumatica. So you could have a savings account, a checking account, a mortgage account. So any of those accounts and bring all of those into Acumatica or, or the selected ones. So for my Chase, I have three accounts that I bought in, checkings, savings, and credit card. And then I linked these accounts to my cash accounts in Acumatica. So I have 10,200 as my checking account, 10,300 as my savings, and 20,500 as my corporate credit card account. So then I can also you know, apply or attach corporate credit cards uh, uh, to my bank feeds. So when you actually uh, upload or download the bank feeds, it will recognize uh, the credit cards. So you can uh, get the bank feeds either on a schedule. So we can, uh, you know, say every hour or every day at 5 p.m. go get all of my, you know, bank transactions. Or you can do it on demand, where which I will show you how to do today. So here, say if you have, uh, you know, a corporate account uh, with Visa or, or Bank of America or Chase and you have one account and then your users have individual cards. So you can say, you know, field contains account owner. So when a transaction is, uh, is uh, on the statement, it will recognize, recognize those transactions based on the uh, owner of the card. And then it can create an expense receipt or identify if it has an expense receipt. And then the same way, you know, user account ID, say if I have one account and, you know, then I have multiple cards for that account, it will uh, then identify it based on user ID. So I can give multiple conditions right here. And then I can also tell it to identify. So if I'm using my uh, bank statements to identify expense items, once you upload the bank statements or transactions, it can create expense receipts for you. Uh, here is where you define those uh, conditions and categories, right? So I'm saying uh, if on the transaction, if the field contains a category called payment, you know, apply it to this uh, expense ID uh, unknown and do not create an expense receipt. But then if you see uh, a category called restaurant, you know, apply it to meals and create an expense receipt. And and so on and so forth. So here's how you can then, you know, configure your bank feeds to also create and match expense receipts. So that is uh, when Rick mentioned advanced uh, expense receipts. This is what uh, he meant by advanced expense receipts. So going back into banking and going into process bank transactions. So since we have hooked it up with Plaid now, I can go into my, you know, uh, account. And here is where I just have to hit download. So once I hit download, it will bring in my transactions. So if you can see, it just takes a few seconds and this is your live you know, statement from your, from your bank being pulled up into Acumatica. So you don't have to do the manual import anymore. And this is what it brings. Again, this is my demo environment and that is why I don't have a lot of transactions on, my, on, on, on the plate side. And I just want to show you that this is how you will be doing it. Uh, once you hook it up with uh, bank feeds. So then you have your state uh, statement uh, being pulled up over here. And then if you have any open you know, payments or invoices or expense receipts in the system, it will uh, you know, match it if you do auto match and then apply it to uh, or match it with the expense receipts or any of these yeah, invoices or payments up here. So I can do that uh, simultaneously for... Uh, my other accounts as well. So if I have a company checking account, here is a list of transactions that come in. And if you know it recognizes that uh, you know 
United Airlines is an expense uh, expense item, it will create that expense receipt for you uh, automatically. So with this uh, bank feed comes a dashboard called bank feed dashboards. So with, you know, this dashboard gives us a lot of information. It's telling us there are 11 transactions from the live bank feed that have to be reviewed. 29 have been matched or processed. Uh, are there any pending expenses? From the transactions, there are eight unclaimed expenses. So here is uh, where now Acumatica business events uh, come into play. So what it's telling us is basically it recognized and created eight expense receipts, but it is spending more information. So say, suppose, you know, the employee has not uh, taken a picture or given it a description. So then we can use business events to send out a mobile notification to the employee saying that, hey, you know, uh, here's that expense item that came in from one of our you know, bank transactions. Uh, can you verify it? Can you upload more information? And then we can send in a push notification to the employee's phone and they can click on the link, take a picture or edit the same you know, expense receipt. So that was about uh, the unclaimed expenses. And it tells us what is the unclaimed amount and of the claimed expenses, how many are claimed, what was the claimed amount, how many are missing attachments, like I just mentioned, uh, you know, use uh, business events. And it is telling us there are 224 receipts that are missing, uh, you know, attachments. And then again, this gives us a little, you know, uh, graphical representation of, you know, unreleased receipts by category. So again, because this is my demo environment, you're not seeing a lot of data, but in your live environment, you will see a lot of uh, data. So this is, uh, you know, what I had about bank feeds. Uh, we definitely can dive uh, deep into it. Uh, once I start uh, getting more uh, de demo data, we can do, you know, an additional uh, webinar just on bank feeds and what the, what the matching process looks like. But I think you, you must have gotten a nice idea of how you can do that matching. Again, I'm going into it. Uh, going into my account and then just by hitting download, it gets the, you know, transactions and then whatever in Acumatica is created, then you can do the auto match to, to match your transactions with what's created in Acumatica. So I'm going to turn it over to Rick now to tackle q and I think it's a good time for Q&A or if Rick has anything to add. So Uday, we had some questions. Uh, I've been trying to answer most of them as we go. Um, there's one that I'm not sure, and I, I think I know the answer, but I want to know if maybe you have a different answer. How do you match a purchase order from the Outlook document to Acumatica Build? How do you match a purchase order? So can you do this with purchase orders? Can you match a PO when you, when you upload the bill from Outlook? No, as of now, it just creates a bill uh, and it doesn't apply it. It doesn't match it with the, with an existing purchase order. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Um, here's another question. Do expense receipt attachments count towards the AP doc package of 1000? No, each, oh, I don't know. Do expense receipt attachments count towards the AP doc package of 1000? No, attachments don't because attachments are basically, you can have multiple attachments. It's the transactions that come. And the expense, if you're talking about expenses that people upload via the phone or so, um, what you do is you create, you, I can upload five different expenses and then create one claim that then becomes one AP transaction. So hopefully that answers that question. Some of the other questions that I answered um, uh, was asking a little bit about the Outlook add-on. So maybe if you want to go real quick into your uh, your profile and show how the Outlook add-on is created. Yeah. So if you if you get the Outlook add-in, right, uh, you go into Acumatica and you go into your profile right here, and 
you can download the Outlook uh, add-in manifest. So it downloads uh, an XML file right here, which you then need to go into your Outlook. Now, depending on how Outlook is configured in your company, uh, either the admin has to give access to all of the Outlook users or individually. So at PC Bennett, Tim, Tim O'Sullivan manages our Outlook. So I couldn't add this. If I go to you know manage add-ins, uh, manage add-ins, I cannot add the add-in because he controls our Outlook. He controls what add-ins we can have. But in some companies, individuals have access to manage their add-ins and then they would just go into you know, manage add-ins and get that XML file and then restart Outlook and you should see the Acumatica ribbon on top. So um, questions about the Outlook integration. It is a separate module. I believe most of our customers have it already, especially if you're uh, tagging emails to CRM. So if you're wondering whether your particular version of Acumatica has the Outlook integration or not, um, just shoot me a quick email or Rick and he can look it up. Um, it is great, especially if you have CRM because you can tag all the communications with your vendors, with your customers, even with your employees and keep everything all in CRM. CRM, as you know, for Acumatica is not just tracking customers, but it's tracking any entity that you do business with. So that's why they don't call it just customers, they call it business accounts. And a business account can be a prospect, a customer, a vendor, an employee, or even a you can designate it as both customer and vendor. Um, can you match a direct debit to an existing IPV to pay the bill? This is from the bank feed. So yes, the answer is yes. Um, how do you get the credit card feed to go to each individual so that they can reconcile their own charges? So assuming you have corporate credit card and you have multiple users, do we want to let the users uh, reconcile their own credit cards? Yeah, so one of the things that I showed was uh, when, when, you know, if a user has not already entered an expense item, right? And if the bank fee recognizes it as an expense item and creates an expense item in Acumatica, right? So we go into expense receipts and if uh, the bank feed creates an expense item for us, uh, in this case, you see touchstone climbing. This ref number over here is uh, the one that's coming from the bank feed. So this tells us that this expense item was created when we did the upload of our transactions. And, and then if it recognizes who it is claimed by, then Again, we can use Acumatica's business events to send uh, you know, an email or a push notification to this employee right here that, hey, you know, this receipt number has been entered, go verify it. Let us know if it's right or wrong or go you know, reconcile it. For those people that don't know what a business event is, do you wanna give a quick definition if there's such a thing of what a business event is? Yeah, so uh, a business event is uh, an automation feature that Acumatica has added. Uh, I think it started in 2018 R2. Basically, it looks at uh, trigger conditions. So it is driven off of generic inquiries. And then it looks at, you know, trigger conditions and sends out notifications based on those trigger conditions to, you know, uh, anyone. It could be, you know, uh, an employee, it could be one person, it could be your vendor, it could be your customer. So business events are widely used. Uh, and they, they can also do some automation where, you know, uh, one of our customers is using business events to change the CRM opportunity stages. So they have several stages in, in their CRM. And if there is a sales order created for an opportunity, go automatically change the stage of the opportunity to you know whatever their stage is corresponding. So business even checks for that and will then auto automatically update that you know stage of that opportunity. Uh, let's see. I think 
Do vendors need to exist in Akimarica previous to the bill recognition? The answer is yes. Yeah, it will. If it doesn't exist, it will. Uh, if it doesn't exist, then it will not bring in the vendor. And it will just show, give an X out here. So this won't be filled right here. But as you can see, there's a little pencil next to that. So you could actually enter yeah. the vendor at that point. If you have security, uh, if your company allows you to enter a vendor at that point, you can enter that vendor and assign it to that transaction. I believe I've read all the questions. I hope I haven't missed any. Uh, If you have any more questions, please uh, put them in the Q and A. Do I think they were we've answered everything? I think there is one more that came up. Uh, that one was already there. Okay. So, with that, Rick. So, oh, they you need to go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Uday. Thanks, Patricia. So, so here is what Acumatica is offering as a year-end promotion. The AP document recognition, um, again, only available to those with 2020 R2. So I know there's not much time left at the end of the year here, but if you have upgraded to 2020 R2 uh, or um, you know, I'll have to verify each. We've got a lot of customers on here and we've got different, um, uh, you know, some people on premise, some people SaaS, some people hosted. So every situation is a little bit different. So what I would suggest on these, um, if you have questions, if you're interested, send an email to um, sales at pcbennett.com because that will hit both Patricia and I. And um, we will, we will uh, respond to you and get back to you and look at your individual situation. But the, uh, you get the free, the AP document recognition free with your upgrade um, up to your next renewal in 2020 R1 and up to 12 months. So that, and that's at 1,000 AP transactions per month. Secondly, we've got the, uh, um, if you have expense management, most people have expense management. Um, I'm sorry, if you add expense management, if you don't have it, um, you can get a free upgrade to the advanced expense management, which is those bank feeds. So if you don't have it, uh, you can purchase the expense management and they will include the, the advanced, spec, advanced expense management portion um, as part of that. And that upgrade will continue to stay free as long as you renew on time each term. Um, these bank feeds, um, are there is a $600 one-time setup fee. Um, once you set that up, those bank feeds, you can, you can add any bank feed in there. Again, there's 14,000 if yours isn't in there. Um, they have set these up uh, fairly quickly, but um, even small uh, regional banks uh, are in there. So what I've seen so far is most of those are gonna be in there. Um, there is a 20% off um, upgrades from expense management to advanced expense management. Ex expense management. So if you have expense management already, you can get 20% off um, the advanced expense management. And again, we're, we're not throwing the pricing out here just because we have uh, different, um, several different combinations, uh, uh, licenses on premise, SaaS hosted. Um, so um, we didn't want to convolute that. So if you are interested in either of those, um, any of these, reach back out to Patricia and or myself uh, and or sales at PC Bennett. Um, there are some other, uh, when you get into the bank feeds and you get into the um, separate accounts like the checking savings, um, there are some other parameters that we'll need to look at on an individual basis as well, um, because you do get uh, one free account that comes with the advanced expense management. Um, but if you need more than that, then we'll need to take a look at that as well and kind of define what those, um, those terms are. 
So apologize, uh, there's a lot of information there and this is new um, functionality, uh, new modules within Acumatica, but um, it is, uh, there's some great uh, features and functionality, hopefully that came through in the demo. Apologize for the uh, uh, technical difficulties. Um, and with that, do we have any more? We have one more question. Any chance to get a 1099 in 2020R2 webinar in December? Um, no, but I am happy to do to to get with you and cover whatever we need to cover. Um, by the way, 2020R2 has the 1099 NEC form that is new. So um, I know of two customers that we, we know for a fact that they need that. So we're planning on upgrading them. Let us know if you're one of them. Um, and I will get with you with uh, in regards to the 1099, I'm happy to meet with you. Um, and then I really hope that this was helpful. These, I'm, I'm gonna do more of these and they need to be your, um, your webinars, so whatever format works for you, if, if we need to have an open mic discussion, that's what we need to do. This needs to be your webinar that works for you. Uh, one more thing is Acumatica is very easy when it comes to year end, but there is some best practices that, that people should follow for year end and truthfully for month end. And uh, myself and a couple of other partners recently did a presentation to the Acumatica users group. If you're interested in that type of webinar, I am happy to put that on. I already did it with the Acumatica users group. I can pull that together very quickly for you guys. And, um, and uh, I can do that. So send me an email and let me know if that's something that you would like to see and we would be more than happy to put it on. Um, okay, so you guys are interested in a 1099, so a quick 1099 webinar, maybe in a week or two, I'm assuming. I wish I could unmute everybody. I don't know, if, is that possible? Uday, is that possible? <laughs> yeah, we can certainly look into it. But yeah, we can totally do a quick, 1099, uh, we could do, it seems like people are interested related to, yeah, you can schedule time with us. Um, and yes, do me a favor, shoot me an email if you're interested in any of these topics and I will put together some webinars quickly at the end of December or to in December to cover whatever topics you guys want. In addition to my poll that that we just did. So I think that's gonna be the easiest way. I really appreciate your time today. I hope this was useful or helpful. And uh, I hope to see you guys pretty soon on another webinar. Thank you so much. And thanks for attending.